Hello! This is a quick video with an update on a thing I did a little while ago. I wrote a JavaScript library called Near My Postcode that lets you look up the GPS coordinates for a UK postcode on a web page without ever sending that postcode to a web server to do the lookup. It works by reading postcode locations from a file that maps all UK postcodes to their GPS coordinates. This file is automatically loaded when required and uses a custom compression scheme to keep it small. It's only five and a half megabytes. I wrote this so that anyone making a store locator tool for a UK shopping chain website now has no excuse for collecting users' postcodes on their server. However, there was one feature that I missed. Sometimes a store locator will allow you to just type in an outward code instead of a full postcode. For example, the outward code for SW1A2AA is SW1A. An outward code, for obvious reasons, represents a much larger area. Being less specific about your location is always a privacy win. It also helps when you don't know a full postcode for an area you're interested in, but you do know the start of a postcode. For example, I don't know any specific Birmingham postcodes, but I know that a postcode that starts with B1 is going to be somewhere in the center of Birmingham. So I decided it would be useful if my postcode lookup library was able to handle this. I'm pleased to say it does now handle this. But this wouldn't be a video on the channel computing the details unless I got into the details. So it's time to talk about how it achieves this and some general thoughts on designing for backwards compatibility. Let's get into the details. You can get the full details of how the first version of the file format works by checking out the video I made where I introduced this tool. But the short version is this. The file is constructed by taking all the UK postcodes and their GPS coordinates and sorting them in a particular way and encoding them in various compact formats to take advantage of the fact that each step from one postcode to the next is normally a small change in the encoding and the coordinates. The custom encoding of the postcode and the custom compression scheme means that a postcode normally only takes up a single byte in the file, and its coordinates only take two bytes. These bytes encode the distance from the previous postcode to this one. Sometimes you need a fully expanded one, such as at the start of the table, or when the next one is too big of a step from the previous one. I also optimize the lookup times for the table at the start of the file that maps the first two characters of the postcode to the section of the file that needs to be scanned for the postcode you want. Unfortunately, this format does not enable us to map an outward code to a pair of GPS coordinates. This is because of the way the postcodes are encoded. The encoding scheme is designed to work on a seven character string, and it only allows spaces to be present in the third and fourth positions. To make this work, I had to create a new scheme for encoding an outward only postcode specifically. This scheme expects a string of four characters. The last two can be spaces. Actually, these seven and four character encoding schemes are really five and two characters respectively, since the first two characters are not used. These are used in the initial lookup table at the start, and so they don't need to be part of the encoded postcode. The problem with this method is that there's now two different encodings for postcodes, one of them for the seven character format and one for four characters. If I try to read this file with the normal algorithm for reading the postcode pack file, then it might misinterpret an outward code in the table as if it was a full code. It only knows how to deal with full postcodes. This is where my little bit of forward planning paid off. I didn't mention this in my initial video, but the file format also includes some extra fields at the start. The header looks like this. There's a magic string at the start to identify it as a postcode pack file. This is UKPP in uppercase ASCII encoding. Then there's a version number. This is a 32-bit integer, which has so far always had the value one. Then there's a timestamp field to indicate when the data in the file was last updated. The version field is what will allow me to change the file format and prevent the possibility of a file being misinterpreted. If I was to create a postcode pack file which had the version field set to 2, then the old version of the software will refuse to read it, since it knows it can only read up to version 1. I can then make changes to the software so that it understands how to read file version 2. This way, there is no combination of file version and software version that could possibly produce an incorrect lookup. In the pack file, the first byte of each postcode entry contains some flags that indicate how it is encoded. There's two flags in this byte. Sometimes the last six bits of the byte are used to encode a compressed postcode. However, there's six unused bits in this byte for the case where the most significant bit is zero. In version two, one of these six bits is now used to indicate that a postcode is encoded in the four byte format and represents only an outward code. Because this can only work when the first bit is zero, this means output codes can't be delta encoded, since that's what the first bit indicates. Fortunately, there's so few output codes that it doesn't have a big impact on the file size. 
When I wrote the tool that creates the version 1 files, I deliberately made sure that those unused bits in the flag bytes were always set to zero in the case where they were not used. This was another bit of forward planning that now means software that reads data files with version 2 can also read data files with version 1, since the same lookup algorithm works for both. A version 1 file looks exactly like a version 2 file that just doesn't contain any outward-only codes, because that bit is always set to zero, which indicates the full 7-character postcode encoding. If you're using Near My Postcode on your site and want to enable this feature, simply update to the latest version. Make sure you update both the library file and the data file. I've also fixed some bugs recently too, and the release now includes a version that can be imported as a module in Node, for if that's a thing you desire to do. I'd recommend not using the Node module to build an API around this library, since that would defeat the privacy-preserving goal of the library, but I can see some valid use cases for it. Perhaps it would be useful to have libraries in other languages too? Let me know if you'd be interested in that. Support me on Patreon if you can. You can also support me on YouTube via memberships or super thanks. Don't forget to gently pet the like button an odd number of times, and if you want to stick around, then press subscribe. Sometimes the last six bytes of... <laughs> Sometimes the last six bits of the byte are used to encode a compressed postcode. However, there's six unused bytes in this byte. <laughs>